All right, so what I want to demonstrate now, guys, I want to demonstrate how good Procreate's liquify tool is. And I cannot stress how good this is. This is crazy. Now, I didn't know you could do this, right? But I realized you could do this, you know, a few weeks ago. Well, not even, a, let's say a few months ago, but since that time, it's been crazy. Like, it's been like, oh my God. So, bam, bam. Right here, we're in Procreate. We've got this big file, but we want to adjust something. But we don't want to have to adjust it individually. We don't want to merge it all down. So, what do we do? We select all of these layers that we want to adjust, right? I purposely avoided that one because that's literally just my logo, right? And this is all the layers we want to select. So that's literally the whole character and some of the effects in the background. Go right here to liquefy. We can liquefy all of the layers at one time. They're individual layers. Do you understand? We can liquefy them all at the same time. So in my opinion, that's a far more powerful liquify than Photoshop's liquify. All at one time, every single layer. And when I go back, my individual layers are adjusted in the same way that I liquefied them. So if I take my lines off, that color has been adjusted underneath the lines. I don't think you understand how insane this is. Let's go back. Go back to making a character look normal. So that's, that's Procreate's liquefy tool. It's insane. It liquefies everything that you select. All right, guys. So the last one, the last thing I'm going to show you guys that I think, you know, Procreate brings to the table a little bit better than Photoshop is the chromatic aberration filter. It's fantastic. So check this out. It's literally just a filter, right? And we go into displace. We can use perspective or displace, right? You just move the cursor and then, you know, you moving the cursor creates an effect. That's chromatic sick. aberration, it's like, yeah. Chromatic aberration, the cameraman says it's sick, by the way. And it's pretty cool. So chromatic aberration is like this kind of like edge effect you get. And it's like, creates like a, a you know, a dynamic kind of look to your thing. So if you have, you know, for example, a piece like this, and then you do it and then you erase the parts that don't have it, it looks really super sharp. But the way we're gonna use chromatic aberration, the way I always use it is displace. So what you do, I recommend zooming in a bit. You just slightly move the direction of the edges. And you get like these multi edges, you can go up and down and stuff. So it's very similar to perspective. You have way more control and it can make your image look more sharp. Now you can do chromatic aberration in Photoshop, but you have to use channels. Um, and using the channels takes away this kind of like singular power to just do it on one layer. Uh, or I mean, to just do it with a filter, right? And I want to specify that this layer with this wolf on literally only has the wolf on. It has no background. So I can still change that background color to yellow if I want. And the chromatic aberration still works on a single layer. So all I'm saying is, this is one of the things that I, you know, I, I've used chromatic aberration for years and this version of it comes so easy and works so much because photoshop doesn't have an actual chromatic aberration filter that's the problem you have to have you have to know tricks to be able to do it so the fact that procreate gives you a filter and it's one of the the main filters in procreate because procreate only has a few filters it doesn't have a, a whole bunch of filters like photoshop it literally only has no let's say a, you know let's say 10 you know or, or 15 literally so that's how i look at it chromatic aberration for the win all right guys so this one is a little bit quicker this is a little bit of a quicker video so basically all i want to do is i want to go over kind of what procreate has in terms of file management that photoshop just doesn't have and what i really want to talk about is these these things here these are called stacks right so what you can do in procreate is you can stack your files together and make folders within the application that have all your different kind of things and this is my folder for giants so it's a lot of scenes with like giant characters you know looking at kind of like smaller characters stuff like this a lot of it's not finished but it's my folder for this specific you know concept that i'm kind of working on um but i just feel like having all of your stuff obviously photoshop isn't a mobile app Photoshop's an app you have on your desktop computer. Now, there's never been anything wrong with desktop computers in terms of how they're used. But the difference is, um, you know, for me, 
the difference is between these two things is the fact that all of my artwork is within the app and it's all in places that I have put it, you know, on purpose. I have things like this. This is like a list of, you know, I has, have random lists and notes, right? Of things that I, I, I can put anywhere. I have all my little conceptual folders where I do artwork. This is called Girl A Day. So this is like my sketches when I'm trying to do a female character every day. I don't always succeed. But that's what that folder's for. A lot of these kind of artworks you'll probably see on, you'll be seeing on Instagram soon. Um, you know, and I have a lot of other things, but I have a lot of these folders with all my different kind of different types of work, different things I want to work on, things I want to put away, things I want to come back to later. You know, my daily sketches. Um, some things are just sketches. Some things are going to be coloured in. Some things are kind of like almost character designs you know some things are environments but that's what i'm saying i have i have folders for everything i have folders for where i put all of my different styles and all my different types of work and i do think that is a fantastic component it would be nice you know if 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 a, if a desktop app could kind of build this into itself kind of like how procreate has built this into itself i don't know how you would implement it but it would just be a cool concept if that's how the application kind of came with its own files kind of built into it. If it had, if it had like a special folder where all of the files could kind of be and kind of be placed nicely and you could access them like this, you know? But that is really all this video is about. It's just about overall kind of like the fact that there is folders where you can kind of put all of your stuff, all of your different concepts, even if you've got you know, eat, you know, IPs you want to work on. I almost couldn't speak then. IPs you want to work on. This is my fan art folder. It's going here. And look, literally just a bunch of sketches. But then some of the stuff's a little bit more finished. Um, I was working on this Goku animation. Oh, Procreate crashed. Oh, did you see that? We have to keep it real. Sometimes it crashes. Now, why does my Procreate crash? Honestly, because it was a bad idea to get the 60 gigabyte iPad. And look how much artwork I've got. <laughs> so that's why it crashes because it just can't handle the strain sometimes. But yeah, look, my webcomic, this is my webcomic style folder. So this is a folder where I've got work that I've kind of wanted to be in the style of how I want my webcomic to be. Um, some's better than others. It's all just style exploration. I'm just trying to figure out one style. But all I'm trying to say is, you can have these different folders with completely different types of work in and yes you can do this on a desktop but you'd have to do it completely and utterly manually and it actually have to exist on your computer in a place with all your other files whereas this is literally just within procreate i have all of these files kind of in here like this and i think this is fantastic and i think this is probably the way that desktop should start thinking about how they should have their stuff but anyway guys Thank you for watching. I have been Fiji and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. What's going on, guys? So I couldn't record this from camera because I wanted you to really see what I was going to do. So, bam, I want to go over perspective right now. Um, so basically, basically what we go do right now, we go to canvas. Uh, right. It seems like I can't speak today, but we go to canvas right here we go to drawing guide we turn it on we go to edit drawing guide right here and we go to perspective right now it depends on what type of perspective you want but usually i'll go for a two or three point perspective so bam bam so all of a sudden we've got a two point perspective um now it always helps to have these further off the canvas than on the canvas because it will create a more dynamic and realistic perspective than if you have it on the canvas. And then for this one, and this is a little trick I learned from a guy called Nikolai Lockhurst, and just have it really high. The problem is having so many kind of pieces within your perspective makes it quite hard to draw when you're drawing assists on. So right here, I, this is my quick access menu. I use a four finger tap to access it and I go to drawing assist, or you can go right here to the layer you click on your layer and you can you can kind of key it on or off right um but if you have it on it means that what will happen is your lines will stick between in in the boundaries of your perspective which is useful when trying to create buildings and stuff like that right 
So keep that in mind. That's the whole point of you creating your perspective grid is so that you can kind of you can use it to create environments. So you can use it to create the set that you're trying to create. And that's the kind of the reason that I use it is wholly for that reason right there. So if I want to create an environment with a lot of big buildings, a lot of kind of building parts, it's a good place to start before you actually kind of turn it off and you start refining things yourself. You know, and as I'm demonstrating, it's just good for that. It just kind of comes in and you can kind of you can kind of go your own way about it. You know, even just with the basic shapes, pushing and pulling, kind of taking and giving, you can kind of create forms and stuff like that. And you can just create pieces of your environment that make sense to you. Then you can go forward, you know, with that same environment. Oh, I zoomed up. I, I came out of the canvas. You can go forward with that same environment and you can just kind of go in and have a bunch of different kind of buildings some really long some shorter some that kind of have these kind of strange shapes like this one kind of looks like a fork that's the whole point the whole point is to have a bunch of objects that when i decide to turn perspective off I can go in and refine them into whatever I want them to be. So just to show, ignore that was my phone. I should have turned it off before I started recording, but here we are. Anyway, look, so because I want to kind of get to a point where I can do a little bit of kind of design here, I think a good idea would be to overall come at this situation and start throwing in some 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 shadows, some shadow shapes. Um, so real quick, I'm just going to add one more building here and then you can do little things like this. Just add these little squares. They don't have to be accurate. It's just a representation of like windows, right? You know, you can do that for a bunch of them. You could just drag down, make these huge windows that never stopped kind of being part of the design or whatever. Um, you know, you don't have to do this, but you know, it helps a little bit. Right? Then you could get an eraser. And you could just go in with that eraser and just make them into windows just by cutting into them a little bit. They don't have to be the same shape every time some of them could be more spaced out some of them could be less spaced out you know it doesn't matter but there's you know so many techniques but i'm just here to show this function because it's just great to have a function like this that works so well photoshop doesn't have this by the way for you to to get this in photoshop you'd have to get a plugin I didn't make these videos though just to kind of say oh photoshop doesn't have this photoshop doesn't have that i just made these videos because i want to see i want people to see the capabilities of what procreate can do for artists because it was designed for artists and i think it's important that software you know going forward a lot of the software that we use in the art community be designed for us because photoshop isn't for artists photoshop is a tool that we've kind of cultivated um but to be fair, I don't even think I need to go into the colouring phase. I think I've shown enough of what is capable. I think you can kind of see the potential. But just for the sake of argument, I'll make a multiply layer. And I won't I won't put this on um I won't put the multiply layer under my drawing guide. And by the way, you can put multiple layers under your drawing guide if you want. So you right here again, drawing guide or drawing assist. And then, you know, this is all of a sudden in perspective as well, right? And I'll make these really clean straight lines, but we'll turn that off because what we want to do is just add some rough shadows. And the interesting thing is you can, you can utilize this in a multitude of ways. So if you want to create like a scenario where the sun's coming from this direction, all the shadows would be on the faces of the objects, kind of like what I'm doing now, or the faces that are facing away from the sun and it just helps you to create that quick kind of graphic sense of 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 shadow
I've changed the arrangement of the layers so our lines take priority in terms of how dark they are. And I changed my hue saturation and make the lines darker so the shadows aren't overpowering the lines. But that is pretty much it. You know, it's just me kind of just quickly whipping up something in perspective, you know, and this is kind of how I would use it when I do actually use it. And then you could do stuff like, you know, have a have a character kind of flying through the scene, stuff like this, you know, and, and it always helps to to have, you know, some kind of a perspective set up before you kind of go into the situation of adding characters and pieces and and all that kind of cool stuff to your scene. If your perspective set up, it will just make more sense once you do it. This is like some kind of weird kind of blimp slash plane slash craft kind of just floating through my scene. But this is what I like to do. I like to have like a, a, a kind of perspective set up and then I like to come in and add pieces and just bring the, the piece to life a little bit. This can be the only thing in the piece with color. This engine. But yeah, guys, that is pretty much it. That was just me kind of showing you guys how to use a perspective, guys, and procreate. Peace.